advocate for Barney Povu, C. The lawyer representing Opposition Movement for Democratic Change, MDC, Alliance leader Nelson Chimisa talks to the media at the Constitutional Court building in Harrah, Zimbabwe, 24 August 2018. Photo. EPA, Eve slash Aaron Ufumeli, the main speakers with the Barney Povu, a leading advocate at the Harrah Bar, Rosalind Hansi the director of Zimbabwean Lawyers for Human Rights and Doug Coltit, a Zimbabwean attorney and human rights activist. The discussion was hosted by Jason Bricklill, formerly the director of the Constitutional Litigation Unit at the Legal Resources Center, and currently based at the Faculty of Law, University of Oxford. The first speaker was Advocate Mpovu, who was himself arrested and held in detention for two nights in June 2020 for the crime of preparing affidavits on behalf of clients in a legal challenge to the government. Mpofu links the crisis in Zimbabwe to what he calls the Army Coup of 2017, a coup which he points out was not against Robert Mugabe, but against the constitutional foundation for the government in Zimbabwe. It's a subtle, but profoundly significant difference. Mpofi attributes Zanu PF's targeting of lawyers in particular to the fact that they have been at the center of challenging the conduct of the Nangagwa government. He says lawyers have sinned against the regime, and now there is an attempt to silence them. With loyally detail, Mpofu described some of the methods by which the ZANU PF regime has attempted to mutilate the 2013 constitution and concludes that at this present moment Zimbabwe is a military dictatorship. Rosalind Hansi, building on Mpofu's arguments about the constitution, drew attention to the government's selective cherry-picking approach to the constitution. She says they often hear arguments that the Constitution can't be implemented until legislation is aligned with it, an absurdity given that the Constitution is the supreme law. However, most of Hansi's input focused on the many ways the Zimbabwean government is using the law to act against its citizens, including making arbitrary arrests often before any investigation has taken place leading to delays in hearings and people being detained for long periods, attaching unfair conditions to bail such as limits on freedom of expression, as has been the case with Hopewell Chinono, criminalizing political debate by arresting people on charges such as insulting the office of the president and ominously subverting constitutional government, arresting and harassing lawyers, acting outside the law through sanctioning and aiding abductions and torture and introducing a set of constitutional amendments that, among other things, will threaten the independence of the judiciary. In addition to its busy workload defending civil and political rights, ZLHR also has its hands full with a range of socio-economic cases. This is not surprising as hunger and unemployment worsens, exacerbated by COVID-19 corruption and the selling off of land and public resources to multinationals and foreign governments. It's on this deepening social crisis that Doug Coltick picks up, explaining how it is fueling protest. Despite the repression or perhaps because of it, Colt it says, Zimbabweans are finding novel means to express their unhappiness and pain. Protests have been dispersed from the streets of cities such as Harare into communities, solo demonstrations have grown, the red striped prison jersey is being worn as a symbol of solidarity with political prisoners and hashtags like Numbers Mbabwe Lives Matter and Numbers Anup Musco have gone viral. Lawyers too have found ways to protest, including recently laying flowers at the entrance to the High Court beside a sign that said respect our constitution and listed six pages of constitutional violations by the regime. Colt cites one example of two young men he is representing. 
Terence Gooter and Loveridge Trisvand protested by carrying a placard saying no to abductions. As a result, they were themselves abducted, tortured and later handed over to the police. On the day the webinar was taking place, Zimbabwe National Students Union President Takuts Wangadzia and several journalists were viciously assaulted by his ANU PF supporting militia as he attempted to hold a press conference. Colt its defense of rights in Zimbabwe has meant that he too is now a target. An instruction was given to fail him in his professional legal exams, which he thwarted. He talks of being manhandled and charged recently for trying to assist teachers during a demonstration and of constant harassment from the state media including an accusation that I was flying around the country in a helicopter throwing money to doctors to encourage them to keep striking. By speaking as frankly as this, one got the sense that the three lawyers were placing themselves in the line of danger, particularly by speaking on a public webinar on which that CIO would undoubtedly have been present. For me, the lawyer's vulnerability reinforced the webinar's concluding message, the need for practical acts of solidarity from people in South Africa. Given the climate of fear in the legal profession, Zimbabweans are calling on South African lawyers to critique the judgments of the courts in Zimbabwe, to monitor political trials, and to continue to issue public statements in support of the victims of repression. Solidarity matters and to this end, they pointed out how, for all its impotence and the sad camaraderie the ANC still exudes towards its brutal brother party, the recent visits by President Ramaphosa's envoy had raised hope among ordinary Zimbabweans that their desperation is not being ignored. As Mpofu said, the crisis in Zimbabwe is not a domestic matter for Zimbabweans alone. The millions who have fled the country to South Africa make it a political and human rights matter for the South African government as well. Close quote DM slash MC According to Mpovu, the Hara regime hates scrutiny, which makes this webinar an essential watching for the international media, anyone concerned about Zimbabwe, and for the ANC and President Ramaphosa's envoys who, so far, have been prevented from meeting civil society activists and lawyers who are on the hard end of the brutal repression described by the lawyers. Post published in Featured 